Hey, it's Mark, the DJ Doctor with WFMCJams.com. Welcome to another midnight special at 7 o'clock, our Midnight Madness show. We are locked in with a cast of characters as usual. we got James, the Lyric Man. How you doing, James? I'm pretty good. I'm running a little bit late, but not as late as some people. <laughs> but That's I'm an here. inside joke. That's an inside joke. <laughs> I'm here. Don't, don't dog the talents yet. He's got to be here That's in a couple of job. minutes. That's my job. That's my job. Good. And the Hibbly Heartthrob, Jason, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Just feeling beautiful tonight. Just feeling beautiful tonight? He's got a little case of dementia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good thing. Uh-oh. Say, let's get that gas. boy a mirror or something. <laughs> and Brian, how's things going back there, Mr. IT Guru? Going good. Going good. We got everything all working, the links up and everything looking good? Hope so. How are we doing on video tonight? Video working yet? I hope so. We hope so. We <laughs> need somebody to confirm that. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're watching the show, go to the Facebook page, WFMC Jams. Um, there's usually a little blue link on there that will tell you. You know, click on, you'll see the video live. If for some reason it's not working, or if you you know you can't hear anything because we're having a sound card issue every week, it seems like we have a sound card issue or something. Um, I've got dynamite invested in in the, the sound card problem, so next week we will have a, a working sound card one way or another. So. If we're if you get on there and there's no audio, then please let us know. Uh, we'll we'll try to take care of that immediately. So, with that, we're going to uh, get on to the actual entertainment portion of it. We've had Mr. Russ Roberts I- into the house tonight. How you doing, Russ? Great, great. Good to see you. Nice seeing you. Thank you very much. My first chance to get to to meet Mr. Roberts, so I'm pretty excited. He comes with a pretty good resume. <laughs> he lied. He lied. <laughs> I made all of it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not really a guitar player. He's very they t- creative. <laughs> they tell you in Nashville to ma- fake it till you make it, and I'm just the best <laughs> faker in the world. <laughs> well, good, good. Well, what we're going to do is we're going <laughs> to let you go ahead and cut loose on a song real quick, pick right. one that you like, and then we'll start asking you all the important questions like, you know, how far is the sun from the moon and all that kind of stuff. All right. Sounds good. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll do one that I wrote a while back with the – Hall of Fame songwriter Do Lowens. He's passed on now, but uh, we had a great three-year relationship writing, and uh, he was just had this childlike uh, enthusiasm for writing a song that just I loved, and uh, I still miss him. But George Strait had it on hold for a while, but he didn't cut it, so I didn't make the big check with it. But I love this song. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> What's between you and me, everybody can see for a country mile. What started when we touched quickly turned into love and it's growing wild. It went out of control and it burned a hole in my old cold heart. A raging desire Spreading like fire from a spark It drifting over the edges of Texas From Texarkana all the way to El Paso My love for you is going places I never thought my love could go Clear over the edges of Texas Getting bigger than the Gulf of Mexico Over the edges of Texas There's no telling how far it's gonna grow When I'd hear people say How they felt this way, I thought that can't be true. I'd seen love come and go, and I almost gave up hope of ever finding you. Then like a tidal wave, you swept my doubts away with your tender kiss. I never dreamed love could ever be as big as this it's drifting over the edges of texas from texarkana all the way to el paso my love for you is going places 
I never thought my love could go Clear over the edges of Texas Getting bigger than the Gulf of Mexico Over the edges of Texas There's no telling how far it's gonna grow Over the edges of Texas There's no telling how far it's gonna grow I can see George Cutting there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish. It's not too late. He's doing one more album and retiring, so this is my last shot at it right there, man. Well, that was some fine guitar picking. How long have you been playing guitar? Since I was eight years old. So a couple of years? Yeah. Good. Yeah, a few decades now, man. So we were talking before the show, so some of your idols have been like the Eagles, but who else has kind of inspired you to get into music or, or love music? The first one I adored was Hank Sr. Really? And uh, then I got into Murrow big time and and left you for sale. And all the early country artists, Ray Price, I still love him to this day. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was kind of my really young years. Because in my hometown, Rocky Mount, Virginia, they had a radio station that played the oldies in with the newies. Right. So you didn't know who was – I didn't know Hank Sr. was dead till I was eight years old. So hmm. – you know, because they played him all the time. Right. And then I hit my wild years, and I got into Skinner then, <laughs> <laughs> big time, and, and Almond Brothers and all that, you know. And But I always I look back, and I realize I didn't have any jazz influence, but I, the things that I love are the more blues-oriented singers to start with. Right. Hank Senior was a blues singer. Right. Southern rock is blues. It's just a little faster, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so um, – uh, I still, I, I, my wife got me satellite radio, and I listen to uh, Ray Price on Willie's Roadhouse all the time, man. <laughs> I love that traditional stuff. When right. I'm listening to country music, that's what I want to hear. And now, have you had a chance to meet Ray Price? Or no. No? Almost one time, but I didn't. Really? No. No. Well, he's still, he's, is he still around Nashville? No, he lives in Texas, I think. In Texas, okay. He's still doing shows, though, man. Yeah, I, I thought I heard he was up in Nashville not too long ago. I thought maybe he might have had a chance, but, yeah. well, that's too bad. I wish. Well, good. So, songwriting. You've been playing guitar since you are eight. How long have you been doing the, the songwriter thing? I tried, to, I tried to write songs when I was that young, and I realized that the first song I wrote was the same melody. It was hit on the radio, and I thought, well, I must not be a songwriter. So, <laughs> I didn't do it for a long time, and... I got married and went back to college part time to get my degree. And in the first class, I took song ideas and, and words just kept circulating in my head. I couldn't even concentrate. And I thought, well, what is going on, you know? And so uh, after I wrote the song down, I was okay. But then here comes another one. I couldn't even study, so I quit again. And uh, I had about 30 songs in no time. And then I started making a few trips to Nashville and got really close to Johnny Cash, did a gospel album my first trip. And they had three or four of my gospel songs they was going to cut. And then he went more traditional with it. But but so I, that kind of gave me, a, you know, when I'd come to town, people would say things that would tell me I was on the right track. You know, my, my first songs, no, nobody's first songs are perfect. Right. But uh, to have somebody that's been around like Johnny Cash and, and some of the people I met in town when I'd make my trips out here, it was to tell you that, hey, man, you're on the right track. It, well, maybe I got a little something going on here. Let's we'll work on it. That's you know, true. it's a craft, though. It's like carpentry. Yep. You're not going to build a fine piece of furniture the first time you cut a piece of wood. You know what? You just got to work on it. Takes time. Anything does that, and that's yep. that's one thing we teach a lot of lessons here at the Family Music Center. And you get a lot of people going, "Well, how long is it going to take me in order to get good at playing guitar? Or how, you know, good at playing drums?" And you're like. Forever, you, you'll be constantly yeah. working on your craft. I mean, I got it. Uh, I was very privileged to get to meet Buddy Rich, wow. and me being a drummer. I mean, that's yeah. like th you don't get higher than yeah, that. That's right. And it was just a few months. The la I met him twice. The last time, I actually got lucky enough to stand six inches from him during a radio interview. And now here's the greatest of all time. Even today, considered the greatest drummer of all time, and he wasn't happy with himself. He wasn't wasn't good enough there was something wrong and he just said i gotta get better i just gotta yeah. get better and he passed away a few months later but we 
an impression that made on an 18-year-old long-haired hippie drummer, how do you get better than that? You know, right. and it really yeah. stuck in there going, you're never, I'm never quite there yet. Yeah. So, like you're saying, it, it takes time and, and a lot of effort and practice. I think it's a key attitude, though. I mean, every time I sit there and write a song, I don't, I never take it lightly. They come to me all the time, the ideas. But every one, I sit there and I, I type in all the lyrics I come up with just on a rough draft, and I, I'd never rush it like I used to. When I first came to town, I had to finish that song today. Now I'll let one set for a while till I know it's right. You know, right. and it's something I'll be driving along on a trip or just going into Nashville, driving into Nashville for something, and all of a sudden I realize the direction I need to go with that idea. And then it's not very long before I finish it, but, you know, you got to let them stew, man. You got to <laughs> let them simmer. Well, good. Well, like a pot of soup. You there you go. You don't just put it in there and get it hot and eat it. You let it simmer all day. It's always better the next day, too. That's right. It? There you are. Yeah, chili's like that, too. There you, you are. Said, <laughs> you said you started trying to write songs at eight years old. Jason did, too. And to this day, he still writes some finger paints. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to read the lyrics, but... Uh, His stick men are getting better, though. They are. They are. Well, he'll graduate to crayons one of these days. One of these days. <laughs> well, good. His stick men have, have hair. <laughs> yes, and they kind of look like mine, but... <laughs> Let's get back to the Mr. Roberts, and uh, why don't you, uh, if you don't mind, pick another one out of your arsenal and, and play right. and tell us a little bit about it. That sounds good. Well, uh, I've got a couple recording projects started, and I hadn't, I hadn't by any means finished them, but um, ones I love going to the beach. We always have. So I thought if when I retire, I want to just take my guitar down there, plug it up in some tiki hut, and just sit there and play my <laughs> beach songs and watch a sunset on the water mm -hmm. and sell a few CDs and go home and chill out. You know, that's that's the idea of retirement. Yep. And uh, I went out on the balcony one night when I was in, in Okaloosa Island, and and I just wanted to write a song. I just, I said, I, I, for some reason, I just wanted to write a song, and that's not normally the way I do it. It usually comes to me. And I sat down on the balcony and looked out, and I said, well, what can I write about? Because it was just really dark, except I looked over, and there was a full moon hanging over the water, and the water looked like glass. It wasn't much waves. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know what, buddy? If you can't write a song about that right there, you ain't much of a songwriter. And that's where this one came from. Cool. <laughs> There's a full gulf moon rising Shining like diamonds on the sea A full gulf moon rising Rising like the passion in me I've never seen you more beautiful Never been more in love this night is purely magical It would be tragical If we're not here to see the sun come up Cause there's a full gulf moon rising Shining like diamonds on the sea A full gulf moon rising Rising like the passion in me Let's just lie here in the moonlight Watch the stars float across the sky Make the most of this June night It's an opportune night To share in Mother Nature's delight Cause there's a full gulf moon rising Shining like diamonds on the sea a full gulf moon rising Rising like the passion in me I love your sleepy smile Wish I could stop the world wild We got a full gulf moon rising Shining like diamonds on the sea A full gulf moon rising Rising like the passion in me It's rising like the passion in me
Thank you very much. Does it make you want to go to the beach? Absolutely. Well, it did its job. <laughs> there you go. Especially in weather like here right now. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. and it's not as bad as our, our friends and family back in Wisconsin and Indiana getting all the nasty stuff. And I guess uh, we're we here going to get another foot. Oh, my uh, nephew, uh, bless your heart, Jason, if you're listening tonight in, in Boston, I guess another foot's heading your way on Thursday. You already yeah. showed pictures of uh, 36 <laughs> inches of snow that he got a couple of weeks ago. Wow. So. But yeah, that's a good song. Gets us in the mood for spring and summertime. Thank now, you very much. I've got to ask you: you had a cut that made it to the movie, The Varsity Blues. Yep, I did. It was a, uh, it was a thing I wrote with Dude Lowens, and mm -hmm. uh, he was so cool to write with because if he had an idea, he want to throw it out at you. If I had an idea, and I threw it out at him, if he liked mine better, he just flipped the page. He wasn't protective you know and said well I think my idea is better you know if he mm -hmm. liked it he just he just wanted to write great songs and yeah. so I got off Vietnam Veterans on Vietnam's Veterans Boulevard on the way to his house and as soon as I pulled off there I just started singing the first verse and I got up there I said man I like what you're doing he said well have you got anything I said yes yeah, I, I just started this on the way up here just as soon as I got off on Vietnam Veterans I started singing it like it was already a song part of it and um, so I played that for him. He said, he flipped the page. He said, let's do it. And it ended up in Varsity Blues in the scene where the little guy, the second string, who becomes the first string, goes in the little country store. Mm -hmm. And it was playing on the on the radio. That's and cool. it may be, uh, they're, they're doing a new movie about Patsy Cline. It's called Patsy. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned for it the other day. I think I'm going to have a you band for it. like Patsy Cline. I know it. <laughs> yeah. But I can do a heck of a job on Walking After Midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, so I think they're going to have three band scenes, and I'll be up on stage with a band singing a song, and it may be that one again because the, the producer really liked it a lot. So well, That's cool. We'll see. You know, it's, it's such a small world. There's a girl up in um, uh, uh, that recorded one of my songs, Tiffany, and she got married, and I can't remember. I don't know where her new married name is, but <laughs> she did a great job of one called uh, What's a Few More Tears that mm -hmm. I wrote with Doodle. And... Um, the producer of the movie called me and he said, "Man, did you write? I just had an audition for this girl audition for the movie, and she said, I love that song. You got any more stuff like that? So I sent him a whole bunch more, and it's a lot of that traditional women's attitude songs, you right. know. So Patsy had a great attitude. She was tough, and so they looking for that kind of song. It's supposed to be the period before she made it to show people that hey, she just didn't happen overnight either. Right, right. She struggled. Everybody does, you know. Got to pay your dues, man. Yep. But anyway." I can do my varsity blues song next. That's cool. That was that was on my mind anyway. That's well, cool. That's great. Yeah, if you want to do it, let's segue right into it. Why not, man? <laughs> Thanks to Mr. Dude Lowens for helping me finish this baby. I do it a little differently live. I usually get the people to say, help me out. I go, well. Boy, yeah. You got one. Yeah. We got singers <laughs> in the two. house, and they left you hanging. When I point to you, that means you got to scream well like I did. Okay. Well, well, well. You only pointed at Larry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, well, well. Okay, I'm gonna do that and and shout it loud when the song when I do it after I do my first one. Okay. And you can also sing when we get to the chorus and it says same old feeling, feeling. You can just jump in with me, okay? And here's it goes. Well. Well, 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 the spark really flew when I bumped into you standing by your high school locker. My jaw dropped down, my heart began to pound louder than a brass door knocker. I got butterflies when I looked in your eyes and saw you smiling back at me. Too tongue tied to talk when you asked me to walk it down to room 203. And that day is just a sweet memory in my mind. But darling, when I look at you every time, I get that same old feeling, feeling. Help me out now. You still get to me the way you did back then. I get that same old feeling, feeling. Your love comes over me like a warm summer wind With that same old feeling, feeling again 
You still look 19, well, you know what I mean, baby, you're as fine as ever. When you tear me up with that look of love, you can knock me down with a feather. It amazes me how we can be deeper in love each day. You still blow my mind after all this time, and you've always done me that way. It don't take much to make me feel like this. Just a look, a smile, a touch, or a kiss. I get that same old feeling, feeling. You still get to me the way you did back then. I get that same old feeling, feeling. Your love comes over me like a warm summer wind. With that same old feeling, feeling. I get that same old feeling, feeling. You still get to me the way you did back then. Get that same old feeling, feeling. Your love comes over me like a warm summer wind. That same old feeling, feeling again. You get that same old, same old feeling, feeling again. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what was it like when you got the news that it was going to be in a movie? I thought it was really cool, you know, and but you know, it just. I got really excited, and I took my wife to the movie just to, and I didn't tell her. I just said, because I, I never want to go see a movie. She's always one that picks the movies. And um, and lo and behold, talking about how people get famous sometimes, it kind of goes a little ahead, and they get a little weird for a while, you know. Well, I sit there, and I want to sit there and watch credits till I see it roll down. Well, just as soon as my song title was supposed to come, the screen split. Oh. And you couldn't even see it. <laughs> Keeps you humble. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but that was pretty cool, you know, because, I mean, that was the first one I had in a movie, and that was my first good check right there, too. Now, did so you stand up in the middle of the theater while it was playing and say, hey, I did that. I wrote this song. <laughs> That's me. That's mine. I did punch I my wife. Though. I said, listen, listen. You punched what? your wife. Shh. She said, shh, so I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> good. <clears throat> well, we got a few people out there uh, responding back in on Facebook. My wife's taking pictures, and. You know, she's posting them on our Facebook, and, and again, we'll get the link going to the, to the webcam. But I'll throw a few names out there so you know who's commenting for you. Uh, uh, Jerry Lane, Angel Jennings, and our good buddy, friend of the show, and friend of, you know, all over everywhere. We meet Randy all over. But Randy Fencham, Odom's Row, you know, a bunch of good people over there. But they uh, said he wrote with you recently and said yeah. you blew him away. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. That's what Randy's own quote there. And we, we love Randy to death. So He's thank cool, Randy man. for listening. He's a great writer, too. Yes, man. he is. He's playing our fam jam. We're pretty tickled about that. Him and Gerald Smith. Here in, uh, yeah, Randy is playing April the 30th. April the 30th, yeah. So we're not too far away from having Randy on the show. So Hey, Randy. Hey, Angel. You also have Perry Hyde. Hey, Perry. So they're all making comments. We want to thank them for listening. So Thank you very much. Well, good. Good. Let's... Uh, get out of that screen there and, and again if we're having any issues with the sound card let us know but i think everything is going okay with the video if you're yes. listening on the the normal wfmcjams.com uh site and you want to jump over and see russ play this live and do a video stream jump on over to our facebook wfmc jams there's a link on there click on the link and you'll go into a webcam and you can see russ performing it you know like he's in your living room so and everything's going good, Brian, still with the video link? Yes, uh, people are actually singing along a little bit ago. They're singing <laughs> along? Yeah, I had, awesome. I had a few <laughs> listeners over here that I was talking with. Yay. There you go. Awesome. You're getting, getting good response. So, And I can be in your living room playing these songs if you'll feed me good. <laughs> <laughs> Pot l potluck dinner, man. I'll yeah. be there. We'll play for food. I was gonna if, say, you, if you like hot dogs, my wife. <laughs> oh, whip up something. <laughs> corn dogs, chili uh, dogs. She, don't, she don't do corn dogs. She's <laughs> working on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since we're talking about your wife, yeah. briefly, I just want to say, you know, to Trish, that was your husband commenting on my laptop. So that's right, baby. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. He made a comment on the laptop, and she came back and said, what? <laughs> uh, that was your husband, not me. So, Well, good. Well, let's uh, get back to the music part. Um, what else would you like to, to jump on there for us? Well, you got a song that's dear to your heart that you... You'd yeah, love to play. Really, I uh, you know I I tell people all the time before I do this, you know, you don't know what a great influence you can have on people. I mean, my uncle taught me how to play guitar when I was eight and changed my whole direction in life. Mm-hmm. And he died in a car wreck when I was twelve, but and that was one of the most. He was like my father, you know. He was it was very devastating, and, and for a long time I didn't even pick my guitar up. But you know, in that short period of time, he was there and mm-hmm. changed my life and I had a grandmother named Mary and even when I went through my wild stage she never she never judged me or anything she just prayed for me and loved me and she developed dementia and in her 80s and uh, she started forgetting us but she never lost her faith in Christ she never lost her attitude she had a great attitude she laughed all the time you know she didn't let it get her down and it didn't make any difference to me if I was her grandson this weekend when I went to see her or if I was her brother. Whoever she thought I was, that's who I was going to be for that moment. Mm-hmm. But I wrote this song. She inspired this song because um, that attitude stayed young with her. She never it never, she never, she changed. And um, So I wrote this one. It's called Forever 17. <coughs> She waltzes around the nursing home with an imaginary partner. She never calls his name, but we know it's our grandfather. She laughs and talks about their plans, their hopes, their dreams, their fears. How she can hardly wait to begin their senior year. She's forever 17. Living in a world with only young and carefree things. Free from time and troubled minds and broken, grown-up dreams. We're all getting older, but she's forever 17. She can't recall her children's names or the son she lost at war. She's forgotten Grandpa died spring 2004. She'll be 91 this October, but she lives in youthful bliss. Wakes up every morning Anticipating their first kiss She's forever 17 Living in a world with only young and carefree things Free from time and troubled minds and broken grown-up dreams. We're all getting older, but she's forever 17. One day she'll dance her final dance, her mind and soul will be set free. To live in a blessed land where everyone will be forever 17. 
Living in a world with only young and carefree things. Free from time and troubled minds and broken, grown up dreams. No one will get older, we'll all be forever 17. Thank you, Grandma Mary. Absolute beautiful song. That's my new favorite Russ Roberts song. <laughs> well, well, thank that's you very much. Song. That absolutely touched home on a couple of different levels. I had an aunt exactly like your grandmother. Wow. Uh, it, I mean, it's like you've written the song for my aunt also. Wow. Um, just happy, loved everybody. And she tell you, I love you, I love you to death. She never even met you. She yeah. loved you to death. <laughs> but bless her heart, as she got up there in years, and same thing as what was going on with your grandmother, she'd hear the, the radio, and that's one of her kids singing to her. She, wow. you know, they're all a musical family, and yeah. that was just one of her kids singing to her, oh, that's this one, and that's that one. Wow. And, and I just love them. I just love everybody. So, yeah, that, that song, that's a great song, and I, I thank well, you for thanks. playing that. that that's, I hope that touches a lot of people. I know it touched me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. My grandmother had Alzheimer's also when I was – younger and we she had to be in a nursing home and but everybody was the fam she's probably one of the most visited people while she was in there and uh i remember going there and they had a piano set up in this one room and she could go up there and play the piano and it's funny to me now i did you know it was funny to me back then too but uh we didn't laugh then but she would play uh out on swanee river and she'd play that and i'm sitting next to her on the piano bench and i was probably five or six and she said do you know what song that is i said no i don't that's out on swanee river oh okay see if you can guess this one and she'd play the same song again and what's that song is that out on swanee, swanee river she was very good now guess this one <laughs> and she'd play the same song again <laughs> that's like, great i knew it i knew it by the time we were done <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe she was remembering she was just trying to make you remember her well, favorite song too. You know? it inspired a joke see my wife works at a nursing home and i tell people it's a bad joke but I tell people I went over there and played for the Alzheimer's ward the other day I did a three hour show and played one song <laughs> best show ever yeah <laughs> wow you had that one song learned brother that's right that. yeah yep. well let's take a just a quick break let Russ you know get something to drink here real quick you know and uh, one of you guys got the schedule you want to read uh, kind of what's going on to the upcoming Midnight Madness show sure um, March 12th is the one and only Johnny Moore Looking forward to that. So that's year. that's next week. That's next week. That's, that's awesome. Right. That's Johnny awesome. Moore. March nineteenth is the one and only Jason Adams, the talented person of the whole group here. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Big, yeah. Biggest How liar. did you get him, man? <laughs> we're taking a week off entertainment we were, that week. Yeah, we were real desperate to <laughs> fill really a slot. <laughs> yeah, it was hard to find yeah, my own short notice. Yeah, Brian, Brian, he can't be up on stage and do the IT stuff, so we had to get somebody else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's after that? March 26th comes one only Ronnie Stoneman. Now, wow. if, if Ronnie's listening, I've never met Ronnie. I've heard a lot of stories about her, and I heard she's just absolutely a hoot. She's but she's a friend of mine on, on Facebook. Yeah. And since some of her posts, I sit and I laugh and I laugh. So I'm looking I'm looking forward to, to meet her in person. So. She's awesome. I, she uh, We've done Nashville Cowboy Church together a couple of times, and she's just, just a ball of energy, man. It's yeah. great. I'm looking forward to that. Is she going to bring her ironing board from Hee Haw when she comes? <laughs> because <laughs> i got a few shirts that uh, – yeah. yeah, I'm sure she'll bring that right down. <laughs> I mean, she can talk while she does. She's doing a Hee Haw, you yeah. know. Yeah. You can be Earl. She'll hit you with the frying pan. Yeah. <laughs> so then that brings us to April. April 2nd, Danielle Anderson. That'd be great. Uh, April 9th is the Midday Farm Report. Awesome. Followed by Daryl Dasher on the 16th. Again, there's a guy whose voice doesn't match his, his singing <laughs> when, he, when he talks. And then, he, and then you hear this everyday normal voice. And then he sings and he's got this big voice, you know, big, deep, rich voice. So we're looking for Daryl to be down here. Uh, April 23rd is Destin Bennett. Mm-hmm. Followed by Randy Fincham on April 30th. April 30th, Randy, it's your show. Yay. That's right. Uh, May 7th comes Vanessa Hill. Great. Uh, May 14th is Trapper Haskins. That's good. 
Trapper has also committed to the Fam Jam. We we think for sure 100% he'll be here on Wednesday night, the last night of the of the Fam Jam show. May 21st is Heather Stevenson. Great. Followed by the 28th with Phil Holland. That we've been trying to get him in a long time. And June 4th is Lee, God bless the USA, Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to Lee tonight, and I said, man, this is the guy that always butchers your last name. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we had Lee on our show last year, and he kept calling him Lee Greenwood. And that's what he the, announced the week he was before. coming. <laughs> I'm trying to promote the week. Be- uh, coming up now, next week, we got Lee Greenwood coming up. I just kept saying it over and over, and then I realized, oh, it's not Lee Greenwood, it's Lee Gibson. <laughs> Well, then, bless his heart, now I got Lee Gibson in my show, and all I could do is kept calling him Lee, Lee Greenwood. And what's funny is, like, a couple weeks later, you had Lee Gibson's CD right in He's looking at it, and he says, and we're going to have, I've got a CD right here, Lee Greenwood. <laughs> I am oh, reading it all, and I read it wrong. <laughs> so I apologize to Lee tonight, and Lee's a trooper, and he, he thank funny. God he's got a good-natured heart. So, but Matter yeah. of fact, thinking about him reading the name wrong while he's looking at it, Brian, m- most of the mistakes may not be your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all right here at this right. end of the table. It's all at the end of the table here. Well, good. Gentlemen, do you got anything you want to throw him away? Questions? We're going to have him here all let's, night. Let's see. Uh, you moved to Nashville from Virginia. Is that right? Yep. Tell Rocky me about, Mount. Tell me about the move here and, like, where did you, you, you know, did you come in, like, a with twenty dollars in your pocket in the camper, and then did you what did you do when you got here to get started? It was really strange because I, you know, I never wanted to leave my hometown. I, I love my hometown, and uh, is it a big town or is it a small? No, town? it's no. a little bitty town. It's Rocky yeah. Mount, Virginia, Franklin County. About uh, we're we're the moonshine capital of the world. That's what they oh, make. Okay. You know, they don't make as much as they used to, but they still make a lot of it there. And <laughs> um, and uh, but I I started making trips. All I wanted to do was be a songwriter. I never really wanted to get up in front of people or anything. I just wanted to write a few songs, see if I could get them cut. And so I started making trips, and I stayed at the Days Inn Plus Park. And the manager there said, you know, you can talk to anybody. He said, I need an assistant manager. You want a job? And I just had, you know, just a few months, a few weeks even, prayed, you know, Lord, I feel kind of drawn out here, but I don't want to just, you know, I'm not moving. But whatever you want me to do with this music thing, I'm good, you know. And they offered me a job. I called my wife. I said, she's offered me a sister manager job here at Day's End. And uh, she said, well, that's interesting. My company offered me a transfer to Nashville. Hmm. <laughs> so I kind of got thinking maybe it was, you know, <laughs> you know yeah, hello. on my shoulder <laughs> saying, hey, you know, I want you to get out there for a while. So, um, just so it was one easy. more sign. Just one more sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I never. Uh, I love my hometown, love my family, and everything. Love my wife's family, but I, I never really got homesick. It was like, I never. It wasn't. It wasn't an issue for me to move I then. Understand. But I mean, I was. It would have been had at a different time because I, I, I live with my dad when I was like in the eighth and first part of the ninth grade, and I got so homesick for my hometown. I said, if I ever get back, I'll never leave again. I understand that feeling as far as, as, you know, not missing it in the draw. I love my hometown just like you, but I don't miss it. Yeah. We've been trying to get him to go back for a long time. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, then when I go back, you know, sometimes I'll I'll think, man, I'm ready to go back and see everybody. And after I see everybody, it doesn't – it doesn't – it's changed a lot. Of course it has over the last couple decades. But you know what? Even at that, if it was still the same town. You're starting to tell people how long you've been here now. I've been here a long time, man. <laughs> it's a whole lot of people coming left since I've been here. I'm like Eddie Rabbit. I figure if I hang around long enough, all the, uh, all the talented people will go home and I'll get my chance. There in, you, you go. There you go. <laughs> That's but what uh, I'm hoping for, too. <laughs> <laughs> but never thought twice about it, you know. And then um, I came out October 1st, and my wife came. So got the house ready and sold it, and I went back and got her November 8th, and we've been out here ever since. And loving it, you know. I've, I, I, I don't get people that it they get down paying dues. I've always enjoyed paying dues. I yeah. think it's something it's something growth that you get about paying dues that you don't get when things are handed to you. I've been yep. here since 2007, and I've met some of the greatest people in the world. I'm including you into that, actually. Well, thank you very much. Uh, some of the best songwriters I've ever met, you know, yourself and uh, Glenn Douglas Tubb and, of course, He's awesome. hanging out with Ronnie Stillman and, and, and things of that nature. Um, I'm sorry. James Bell as well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank Ooh, you. boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wanted to talk about the good ones for a while. He's a pretty good fisherman, isn't he? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I forgot what I was even talking about. (laughs) You just threw me right off. (laughs) I'm talking about... You know, not you going were, back not, home. You were name dropping. Yeah, going yeah. back home with what you really like it here, and you got great people like Russ and, yeah. and James, <laughs> yeah. and Johnny Moore, <laughs> and Johnny Moore. Yes, uh, I'm enjoying meeting the people, and I get a chance to meet some of the my heroes, musical heroes, growing up. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I wouldn't get being back in Michigan. Yeah. Now I am excited. I get to go back and play a show in my hometown in May Fourth. Yeah. Uh, that'll be a fun thing for me. But yeah. It's always good to go back and get reconnect with your roots, you know. I mean, it's it's what it's what made you who you are, you yeah. know. And I mean, I I growing up, I wasn't crazy about that. I said, man, I can't wait to get out of this little one horse town. But then when you when you travel a lot and you spend a lot of time away from there, and you go back, you realize, hey, that's what made me who I am. That's where yeah. I live, and the family I grew up with, and even the troubles that you have in your family and stuff makes you who you are, you know. Yeah. Now, are you at the point that you're main income is music no i got another company that keeps me in green stamps so i can do this when and how and wherever i want to you know and it's it's it keeps you out in amongst the people too i like to get out amongst and i don't want people in the music business to get all offended when i say this but i like being around normal people and i'm (laughs) and music creative people aren't normal my wife will tell you i'm not normal Yep. And so I like being out amongst normal people and helping them do whatever I do whatever I can, you know. And it just gives you a a, a real down to earth life perspective. You're not gonna get because I mean I have I had publishing deals and I wrote full time, you know. And it tends to skew your perception when you're down on Music Row every day, you know, because you miss you miss interacting with people that aren't creative. And I consider just normal, talented, but they just not weird. Like us, you know. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> they don't get much weirder than James. Yeah, I don't like hanging around. <laughs> I like hanging around people that aren't creative either, and, and hanging out with Jason quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to tell you a, a quick. Boy, story. he's got a great under the belt <laughs> kind of a leg. Hey, he? we, we, you know, and I don't even try sometimes. It's yeah. just, it's just natural. Ain't yeah, it? it is. Uh, he wrote me a song here recently. Oh yeah. Lord, let's not go on this one. <laughs> now I was going to tell you a quick story. You talking about, you know, you came from your hometown, you go back, and things have changed. My dad is a pastor or a preacher, and he pastored a church back in, I don't say the early, early 70s in South Carolina. And I guess it was my senior year, me, him, and my mom took a trip back to South Carolina, and he was going to point out all these things as we come into the, the town. I think it was Spartanburg. But he's like, now, James, right over here. And he's there was a, uh, and he looks, and it's nothing but an empty field. And he goes, well, they, they must have tore that down. And he we go, if you want. Now, James, right over here, and it's another empty field. Man, yeah. they, they must have tore that down. And he kept doing it until he was like, surely they wouldn't have torn down the whole town. He was about to have a nervous breakdown. We stopped <laughs> to get gas. And he goes to pay for the gas. And he says, man, I, I can't believe things have changed. I, there's not any buildings out there that used to be there next to the road. And he says, Sir, that's the new bypass. It's only been open for two weeks. The other road is on over. They oh, haven't changed wow. any of it. We were just on the wrong road. That's funny. <laughs> but it looked the same. But it had been, thir- looked- been 30 years yeah. since he'd been through there. Yeah. yeah. Somebody put together a book, um, and it was pictures going back to the late 1800s, early 1900s in my hometown. But a lot of them were, were when I grew up there, too. And, you know, I thought. You grew up I in thought- the 1800s? Yeah, man. Yeah, he is I'm telling telling good, telling you look good for your age. He's got a couple of decades. Hey, it's those it was vitamins, man, to do the trick. That Forever yeah. Seventeen and song is a yeah. true story. Yeah, <laughs> and um, but you know, I saw a picture of the Western Auto Store and the Chrysler dealership in town. You know, and those the Western Auto Store was just it was a long building, but just it was just one section, like a little shotgun store. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I was eight, nine years old, that looked like a huge store, right. and yeah. it was a little bitty thing. Yep. And it's just it's kind of cool to see the pictures, and because I, looking back, it was an awesome place to grow up. You know, I didn't think it was the time, but kids never think what they got school. You yeah. know, but it was awesome. Yeah, I'm the same way. I come from a small town in Wisconsin. Yeah, as we say up there, Wisconsin. 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 But, yeah, it's the same way. Couldn't wait to get out, you know. Um, I'm kind of glad I am out. Uh, it's a it's a small town, but, you know, if you had to do anything, you, you, equal distance. You either went to Milwaukee or you went to Chicago. Yeah. I was right on the Wisconsin-Illinois state line. Um, beautiful country up in that uh, neck of the woods, but 
Yeah, as a kid, you just couldn't wait to get out of there, yeah. you know, and, and, and get out and get on the road, do whatever we need to do. And then I went from there to Illinois to Indianapolis. And then my family, is mom's side, is from down here. So kind of what you're talking about, I've been coming to, to Hillsboro right down the road, you know, 15 minutes or 10 minutes. And half of that is still childhood memories. I can I yeah. can go down there and see my aunt's weeping willow tree still in the front yard, but it's not there anymore. It's cut down, but you can see it. And you can envision the house is still there, but it, just good memories that you can go back to. And I like <laughs> McMinnville looks a lot the same as what it did when I, my grandmother, the, her last house that she had that she lived in was in McMinnville. So I'm not a songwriter, but I can see all these things in my head. I go, man, that's just cool. There's songs involved there. But I, I've done the songwriting thing for a minute. You know, like you say, it was cut, a hit. Cut the wood. And it, was, it was a huge hit. Yeah, it was a huge hit. Right <laughs> into the tr- bottom of the trash can. <laughs> it was a huge hit. <laughs> the thing, the thing about writing a song, other than, you know, if you don't if you don't have melodies in your head, the only thing different about writing a song and just telling a story is you make it rhyme. Yeah. Right. So it's got to be in meter and rhyme. And, and it's, it's funny because I, I don't know if it's something I developed over time or if I, I don't remember when it kicked in, but it's like if I have a song idea, I automatically think to, tell a story in rhyme it's all it's like i'm thinking ahead what am i how am i going to say that and, and I, I can't type it in my phone fast enough unfortunately that's not always true anymore <clears throat> look at taylor swift well yeah <laughs> well yeah there's some yeah. unique, well, unique you know, ones out there but the, <laughs> the thing is you know i mean um you you go for your say i was never good at that going for your audience she did that right yeah. and did a great job at it but for me it's like um if it's something, if I have a song idea that I feel like can say something to somebody and help somebody, whether it's a love song or, you know, or, or a gospel song, that's always the way I've kind of approached the song. What what good's this song going to do? What Why bother writing this song? That's what I always think. I you wish know? you'd write me one that has the winning lottery numbers in it. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> I wouldn't give that one up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, let's, let's hear a gospel song. <clears throat> All right, I... I um before we take up an offering. This one <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um I've i one of my recording projects is as I said earlier is my beach thing, but I I want to do a a rootsy gospel album. My last one was a live one and uh I think sometimes you can when you have a large band playing it, sometimes you miss some of the words and the tenderness of some of the lyrics and so I wanna do this one basically in my studio and hire a couple guys to come down and play on it, but but I had, um, last May, I had a, my finger started bothering me, and I had a little bone spur on it, and I wasn't going to fool with it until my bass player said, you know, Russ, my, my wife had that, and the, the cyst started kind of eating away at the bone, so I made me an appointment. I said, I'm getting this baby <laughs> out of there. That's my cord in hand, you know? Yeah. And so I went and had it done in May. He did a great job. He thought it looked great when he took the big bandage off. I thought I looked like Frankenstein, and, uh, but I don't get worried about too much. But that that bothered me because you know I love playing and writing. And uh, so the first thing I did when he he put the band just the little bandage, little band aids on it, I was, I ran home. I picked my guitar up, and all I could do was, and I just started doing that over and over again. And, I, and uh, these words came out, and it was almost like he's he's saying, "Hey, I made that finger. Don't." Don't worry about it. If I made it, I can heal it and make it like new. Mm-hmm. And this song, the first song, the first verse is well, the whole thing's autobiographical, but especially the first verse. This really did happen to me back in the day. When you know, the devil's trying to get it out of tune for the gospel song, and I ain't gonna <laughs> let it happen. But um, here's how it goes. I used to have some rough and rowdy buddies Who had my back and I watched out for them But they disappeared so fast it wasn't funny When I told them that I'd been born again But I've got one friend who sticks closer than a brother He loves me more than my mama or grandmother 
I used to be like Peter, afraid to say that I knew him. Now I'm proud to say that Jesus is my friend. I know he never leave me nor forsake me. He carries me when I'm too weak to walk. When I breathe my last, I know he'll take me to my eternal home inside those Jasper walls. He's my one friend who sticks closer than a brother. He loves me more than my mom or grandmother. I used to be like Peter, afraid to say that I knew him. Now I'm proud to say that Jesus is my friend. He died for me, I live for him. He forgave me all my sins. I know he's the only friend that I'll ever need. He's my one friend who sticks closer than a brother. Loves me so much more than my mama or grandmother. I used to be like Peter, afraid to say that I knew him. Now I'm proud to say that Jesus is my friend. Yes, I'm proud to say that Jesus is my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. I used to beat up on Peter a whole lot. I thought, man, <laughs> but you know, everybody does it. Every Christian denies the Lord sometimes in your actions or in action. So I'm a little kinder to Peter these days. <laughs> <laughs> we just try to beat up on Jason as much as we yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, now you got James and Jason, so why you need to beat up on Peter, right? Yep, That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you had a chance to open for several different artists. Yeah. Some pretty cool ones that kind of just stick out there that you really enjoyed yeah you know i i uh a lot of them were nice you know mm -hmm. charlie daniels was really cool down to earth oh but that was a hoot and um puts on an awesome show got yeah. to work with shell bully for a long time he became like family hmm. well, that would have been uh, cool he was he was amazing <coughs> he was just he was talented in so many different ways i mean yeah. he was in a bunch of movies and and uh one of my favorites he was in was out, the Outlaw Josie Wales. I mean, that, that's one of my favorite movies. But mine's one of the period. best movies you know? ever. Yeah. It's, it's just it, so much great dialogue in it. It's at number two. It's in the top two for me, both Clint Eastwood's. Yeah. The Unforgiven and yeah. the Outlaw Josie Wales. I'll yeah. say to me, The Unforgiven is nowhere close to Outlaw Josie Wales. Oh, I don't it's know. It's just it's something about the Outlaw Josie Wales. And I know oh. I'm kind of partial because Sheb's in it, but uh, – yeah. But you know that the I always one liked his Ben Colder routine too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when when Clint Eastwood went out there to get Sheb and the other guy that was had been captured, yeah. that that dialogue with uh, the Indian chief and Clint Eastwood is the best dialogue of any movie I've ever seen. Yeah, I came out yeah. here to live with you or die with you. And he kept his teeth together the whole yeah. time. I came yeah. here to live with you or I know, die with I know. you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, tearing these guns in your. <laughs> I, know. Oh, wow. I know. And a little trivia story: Sheb said that when they captured him, you know, when you see the scene, the Indians are still on their horses, stomping around all over the place. Well, they've got Sheb and the other guy buried up to their neck in in the sand. Right. Well, they had a big hole there and a piece of plywood with sand on it. And Sheb and the other guy was sitting on a five-gallon bucket. Well, <laughs> Sheb says he's never been scared before in a movie, but he was scared to death in that one because those Indians, they told him to, you know, get the Indians, the horses prancing and everything, mm -hmm. and they were stomping all over that plywood, you know, and he said that he just knew one was going to step on his head before it was over <laughs> with. He probably had to say, hold on a second, folks. Let me turn this bucket over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm crawling down in this hole in a minute. <laughs> yeah. But I, I have to say the. The one that I was just kind of impressed to me was Bob Hope. I mean, that guy oh, yeah. had been around forever. And, I mean, my grandparents watched his movies. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, and he was still doing shows. And, and we did a show down in uh, Texas. He had this um, – he was benevolent to this uh, school that was for, uh, m you know, kids with mental problems and right. stuff. And 
he just give millions of dollars to that. And Dottie West was on his show, Lulu Roman. and I mean, it was a great bunch of people, but he just came over and talked to us just like an average guy. And I, know, I knew from when I was a kid he's the richest man ever in the entertainment business, you know, yeah. so he didn't. He didn't have to hang out with us poor guys, you know, but he did. <laughs> That's probably what made him cool. as great as he was, though, was the fact that he could do that. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And when you see him tell his jokes, you know, it's just like he is sitting around talking to you. He didn't put on anything when he got on stage. I think that's why he was so funny. Yeah. You know. He was real and believable. Yeah. Well, that's and, good. And uh, years later, I got to go. W- in 2010, we went to Guatemala on a missions trip, and Lulu was on the trip. And I said, you know, I did a show with you a long time ago. She said, really? I don't remember <laughs> that. I said, well, it was a bunch of us. And it was. And sh- but she remembered that what the show was for the kids, you know. That's cool. That's cool. Well, why don't you pull out another one we got time for a couple of more and pull all out right. pull out your next to your next to your best all right well i need to do something humorous all right i had this uncle that was really strange you know i had one uncle that taught me how to play guitar but the other uncle was just he was just an odd bird i mean it's just no <laughs> i mean it was daddy and the odd bird uncle and then hc my uncle that taught me to play guitar you know and so i saw a qu- quite a cross section of those three Mm -hmm. but I was thinking I had to change the title of the song because he was still alive I didn't want it to (laughs) you know (laughs) word get around I heard a funny song about him but but uh it rhymed better anyway Donald don't rhyme with too much you know yeah and so uh his story didn't end up as good as Uncle Larry's but uh he's he's he was weird (laughs) he was weird like Uncle Larry and Uncle Donald. <laughs> Let's see if I can. I, I wouldn't think about doing this now. Let's see if I can. Well, he always wore worn out overalls, sat at the bar making cat calls at all the pretty women walking down the street junior run him off a time or two maybe three but he let him come back cause he spent a lot of money on pickle pig feet jim beam and gin rummy all the town folks said he was weird and scary but they just didn't know uncle larry He'd give you the t-shirt right off his back, but the family didn't care a thing about that. His name was not even part of their vocabulary. Everybody but me disowned Uncle Larry. Well, he married Myrtle at a race in Daytona. Her daddy owned half the oil in Oklahoma. They honeymooned in Paris, then went on to Maui. Then bought a 12-room mansion on the lake in Franklin County. I saw him today in a red Lamborghini. And Myrtle was sporting her new French bikini. They party with rock stars and dignitaries. Now everybody wants to hang out with Uncle Larry. He'll still give you the t-shirt right off his back But the family doesn't care a thing about that They just want to meet the friends he's made since he's been married It's funny watching them all suck up to Uncle Larry (laughs) They bow down to him like he's the Virgin Mary Every time he comes around, he always draws a crowd. There may even be a movie about Uncle Larry. That's my Uncle Larry. Knock him dead, Uncle Larry.
Thank you very much. Very It'd be good. kind of funny if that turned out to be a big one just because <laughs> he was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> say, well, how do you, s you know, some newcomers say, well, Mr. Roberts, how do you, how do you uh, get a hit, write a hit song? I said, just pick out the weirdest person in your family and write a song about them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I got a greatest hits album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought my dad's got, there was five boys in his family, and I always thought it'd be funny you know, because I got two of my preachers, so they do a lot of funerals. I mean, growing up, we didn't learn to work on cars. We didn't go fishing. We had funerals to go to. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought, what if one of them owned a funeral home and the rest of them worked there, you know? They could do a TV show about that. And, like, when they get out to the cemetery, they have to open the back of the hearse and get out their yard sale items before they can get to the casket and stuff oh, like wow. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a TV show I could watch. I mean, I could watch it that it would be hilarious. Great yeah. way to raise money to pay for the funeral. Well, they'd have... <laughs> yeah. They, they'd have... You know, well-known people fake their deaths, you know, to raise money for the funeral home, you know, to, to strike up business, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's different things. There's yeah. all kinds of angles, man. Yeah. Well, Russ, did you ever pursue a career as a member of a band, a rock band, country band, jazz band, gospel band? Yeah, you know, I had I had two or three situations. I love harmony. Mm -hmm. I love to sing harmony. I can sing all the parts and everything. And the first band I put together was a guy and his daughter, and they were cool. They just, we had a great time. We had family harmony. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, well, together we sounded like we grew up together. You know how that's just different. Right. And, um, but it was one of those stage mother situations, you know, and it, and it broke up. I mean, it just was no way, it was so miserable. And <laughs> then I came to town and tried it again in Nashville. And it, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's so many different personalities involved. It's very difficult to get one. You almost have to have one person that has, Fifty-one uh, percent, right. just to keep everything. Say, hey, this is the way it is. Let's do it, and yep. not have too many, you know, too many people in the stew. And it really, it was that was that's one of the sad things to me about all that because I think about the great, the Gatlin brothers and the people right. that had wonderful harmony, and their music never gets old. The Eagles, the Beatles, yeah, Alabama, yeah. Alabama, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just a. Uh, there's something about the human voices together. I was watching a classic Billy Graham the other day, and uh, I tape him because I like to watch him because he always stayed true to the, the central message. He never got weird, you know. And, yeah. and so, uh, but just hearing the choir without even a piano or organ play some of these old gospel songs, these old yeah. hymns, just the voices yep. together are just amazing. And not only do you hear it, but you feel it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a difference. Yeah. That's that's what I think about good harmonies. Um, and again, we always laugh. I wasn't big on country music, even though my mom's from down here. And, you know, and I've, I've seen Porter Wagner and Roy Acuff and yeah. Ferlin Husky and all that. But, you know, when I've seen the Beatles, I was gone. At yeah. that point, I'm yeah. done. I, I'm a big rock and roll fanatic at that point. But some of the old, even the old country stuff, just the harmonies, and, and again, I said I'm not much in the country, but the Statler brothers, yeah. I just fell in love with them guys. Yeah. Not only yeah. were they humorous, and Harold, bless his heart, I, he was my favorite. He yes. just cracked me up. Yeah. But just the harmonies. And, again, y when they sang, you could feel the song. You could feel what – and it made it made it more real to me. So yeah. I, I don't want to hear the vocals. I want to feel it. And I think good vocals like that does that to the me. The way my mom met my dad was – her and two of her sisters there was nine kids in her family but two of her sisters the three of them would go sing at these churches and uh that's how he met her and i'm third i was 30 years old and never heard the three of them sing together that i could remember and my grandmother was at saint thomas hospital we knew that she just had minutes to live and so there was all the brothers and sisters that lived around here they were up there had several I mean, all of us packed in this one room and they had the chaplain from saint thomas hospital he'd go and he'd say a prayer and then my dad was there and he would say a prayer and then all of a sudden, you hear these gospel songs start a cappella, and it was that harmony. Wow. And and then my uncle was there, and he had he could sing too, so he added a bass into all that. And by the time this was over, I, you know, I had a lot of cousins that were sitting there crying and stuff. I wasn't crying. I mean, I love my grandma, but I wasn't sad. I was thinking, you know, this is a lady who lived a good life. Yeah. You know, she was a good Christian woman. Yeah. Her last moment on earth is this right? Is her kids singing gospel songs and people praying, and talking about her? Yep. And then she closed her eyes and wakes up in the presence of God. That's not a bad send off. If you got to go, yeah. that's they how just, I want to go. They just go. sang her home, man. Yes, I, think I mean awesome. it was good. Yeah. How awesome. That's yeah. great. You know, that's great. 
Well, cool. Well, why don't we? Uh, she left owe me like twenty five dollars. I'm really mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get well, what it. a terrible ending to a great <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just well, we all were touched and moved. Yeah. We got people weeping on the internet, and now you're like twenty five dollars <laughs> owed to grandma. Yeah, that's funny. So well, let's uh, let Russ pick a, a final tune and, and send off on a happy note. <laughs> let's do a yeah. happy note here. Um, pick one out that you really like, and then we'll close off the show and. Then and if Russ doesn't mind, we like to always have him stick around. we got a little after-shop stuff that we always like to do. So, uh, Russ, you got one that you just – I do. I, uh, I've changed my mind right in the middle of the stream, too, because, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've had a conversation with a guy the other day, and um, he, he was a very successful CPA. And he got off into the party world, got to messing with dr- drugs, and he ended up in prison. And uh, But in prison – he went to a Bible study class, got saved. Now he's an ordained minister down in Texas going to prisons doing Bible studies. Hmm. So it's been a major change for this guy. And we had a conversation the other day. They're coming to Nashville to do, th- do a little crusade at this prison where he was. And um, they wanted me to come over and sing a few songs. And uh, I think I'm going to be out of town, but I wish I was, and I'd love to go do that with him. But he, he said something in the conversation. It made me realize, you know, because we talked about different my father was not a good father, and, and I said, you know, it realized, I realized one day that there, by the grace of God, could have been me, too. And so, uh, you know, you can forgive people, but it's, it's hard to learn to forgive people. It's hurt you. And um, I just think it, I wrote this song just to try to get people to think about forgiveness because everybody's going to do you wrong except God. And... Uh, you just have to forgive people instead of carry it around on you all the time. It's called I Hope You Will. It's got to be in tune. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Isn't it funny to just have tuning problems when I get ready to do a gospel song? Yep. Mm-hmm. I hate that the show got to end. This has been a good show. I've enjoyed every one of the songs you played. Well, I, thanks, man. I've I've loved doing this. I'll do it again, man. I'd love to come back. This is awesome. Book it, Dano. We'll I'll be uh, book it, Dano. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to I'll try to uh, take into consideration there could possibly be a bottleneck coming out of Nashville during rush hour, <laughs> <laughs> and try to get here five minutes early next time. <laughs> um, you made it three minutes before the show started. That's pretty good. Yeah, I know it. That GPS had it nailed down pretty good there. <laughs> An iPhone 5, man. Okay, um, I got to thinking about what if I had, because um, you hear these stories all the time, so I thought, what if I, during my wild years, I, d- I did hurt some people. Everybody does, because they don't want to see you party and waste your life, you know. And and I thought, but what if I, what if there was a girl back there that I really loved and am just so sorry I lost and I never got over the loss? But I did get straightened up. And how difficult would it be to go apologize to her? Writing a song about it wasn't that hard, but I think it'd be a lot more difficult to look her in the eye and apologize. But I hope you like the song. It's called I Hope You Will. I left my dean in a little Baptist church Apologize to all the people I hurt but you That's what I came here to do No, I'm not here to interfere with your life I know you've moved on and you're another man's wife That's cool I heard he's real good to you But I was a devil Who did you so wrong You were the angel I left crying alone If you can't forgive me I understand how you feel But the Lord did 
and I hope you will Is that your little girl? Boy, she really is cute Except for those blue eyes She looks exactly like you She even laughs like you too Yeah, I heard the rumors That she might have been mine Well, here's my number If you should decide To tell her the truth Tell her what I just told you I was a devil who did you so wrong And you were the angel I left crying alone If you can't forgive me I understand how you feel But the Lord did I hope you will Mistakes and wrong decisions Oh, they come with being young I'd give anything I'd give everything If I could go back and change this one Cause I was a devil who did you so wrong You were the angel I left crying alone If you can't forgive me I understand how you feel But the Lord did And I hope you will Yeah, the Lord did. And I hope you will. I hope you will. I'm praying you will. Thank you very much. Absolutely God bless beautiful. you all. Beautiful song. Thank Great you. job. Great job. We want to. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, for coming out and entertaining us and entertaining the, our, our, our family and friends that's on the Internet. Um, I did get a couple texts during that song. My sister Dawn Parker wanted me to tell you that she loved you and she loved that song. <laughs> Feelings you, mutual. Thank you very much, Dawn. You have some great, great music. Um, and, again, several of your songs have touched home. Thank and you I think much. that's a really <coughs> good good sign that you're on the right path. Uh, you're, you're, you're touching songs to make people feel it and I, and I I you don't get that a lot and I appreciate that you've got some really great music and I I hope you don't mind if we use some of that on a radio show no I'll let them hear it man and that's great help so hope it'll help some people well let me throw back to the the gentleman to my left any last minute question you'd like to ask Mr. Roberts before we close the show up tonight when would you like to come back because <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to sit for and listen to some more well I tell you one thing that we need to, to talk to Mr. Roberts about is we did our our first gospel fest oh i think it was i can't remember the weekend before the weekend after labor day but we're going to be doing another gospel fest we'd be happy to see if you'd be interested in joining that yeah, that'd be awesome we had miss joanne cash uh, at it last year and we had i think about 20 different bands and artists performs and i'm sure my wife who i do the fam jam set that up my wife does a gospel fest set up so I'm, I'm sure she'd like to get you signed on board with that because you got some great. great great music that's been given to you thank you very uh, much and then, uh, again, we've got all kinds of things we can probably get him involved in, depending on time. He's a busy man, um, but w we will definitely keep in touch. Apparently, you've touched James pretty well tonight. I've enjoyed it. I really have. Well, I appreciate it very much. Good. Uh, when's the next show for Russ Roberts? Uh, anything big coming uh, up in the works? Or? Well, I'm doing Smoky Mountain Catboy Church this coming weekend in Pigeon Forge. Great. That's cool. always exciting. And... Um, <coughs> That's about it right now. I got some tentative things booked, but uh, okay, you know. And you'll post that on your website and Facebook. What's going yeah, on? Come up. Throw it up on Facebook. Last minute as usual. <laughs> say hey, everybody. 
Uh, Come on out tonight. <laughs> there you go. And we'll keep posting on ours also what's going on. Again, we've got our Facebook page, and then we, we have Red Clay Productions that we, we post stuff on. We've got uh, the Family Music Center page. We've got the WFMC Jams page. So we try to get out there a lot. Um, you know, throwing uh, people out there go, you need to go check these artists out. Um, yeah. And you did a fantastic job. And, again, it was very – uh, it's one of those great surprises. Again, I never, I get to meet most of the people before they come on the show. You're one of them I have never met, so you hear, oh, he's really good, he's really good, and you're going great. And then when you get on there, you, you're, the level was better than what I expected. Well you know, I you're just a fantastic singer songwriter. I'm very impressed, and I'm, I'm so glad you were part of our show. One more Thank quick you question. Very much. All the wonderful stages you've played and the people that you've, you know, opened for and whatnot. What stage has intimidated you the most? Well, the first, the first uh, fair I did, I was with a group called Indian River. I was the lead singer for a quartet, and uh, I forget what city it was in. We did so many of them, but it was like fifteen thousand people there. <laughs> and you know, I've been used to doing intimate settings and and a few clubs and stuff. But man, you walked out there and and. Uh, when they introduce you in that crowd, just 15,000 people, they didn't know us from Adam, but they were seemed to be excited. Down in Florida, which Indian River grapefruit. So if you had an Indian River's name, I guess that was part <laughs> of the, you know, excitement. But, I mean, when they erupted into applause, it kind of takes you back a little bit, you know. But once the band kicked the first song, you know, it was cool. I said, get a hold of yourself, man. <laughs> You're a professional here. Let's get busy. <laughs> I remember that feeling. Uh, actually, the one that intimidated me was actually the uh, Texas Troubadour Theater playing for Cowboy Church. Oh, yeah? It was mainly the stage, not so much the venue. It's yeah. when I thought about, you know, the people that stood on that stage, the Ernest Tubbs yeah. and Merle Haggard and all those wonderful oh, people. Oh, yeah. Now, Ernest Tubbs Record Shop, I was a little nervous when I did that one. I've done that one a couple times, one downtown. Yeah. Because, you know, I see all the pictures of the people that were on there, and it's just all, a lot of them were my heroes growing up. So it's, you know, it's kind of wow. Man, it's <laughs> pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, we'll let Mr. Roberts get a chance to get back home. Well, like I said, we've got a couple of housekeeping things we'd like to do with him after the show is over with. But we appreciate everyone. you got to sweep the floor before you can yeah, leave. That's right. Somebody's <laughs> got to clean this mess up. <laughs> i got a, I got a yeah. parking lot that needs yeah. some attention, if you don't mind, yeah. some potholes. The if you'd have been right earlier, you could have had this done. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's what's what and happens when you I'll don't show up on time. I'll bring my vacuum cleaner next time. There you go. Well, hey, thank you all for having me. This has been a real pleasure. I enjoy this very much. And it was worth the drive out in the country. Well, we're glad you did. So yeah. let's give him a big round of applause, everybody. Mr. Thank Russ you Roberts. Thank much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we, again, we thank all our listeners. Make sure you, you tune in next week. Next week we said we got uh, we're Johnny Moore. So we got Johnny Moore instead Johnny of Moore. Jason. So if you're looking at the old schedule online, just switch it. Johnny's going to be first and then Jason. So we're looking forward for uh, Mr. Moore next week. So make sure you tune in around 7 o'clock to the Midnight Madness Show at 7. And we'll see you then. This is Mark, the DJ Doctor, and we'll see you later. Good night.